compound angle formulae. Now, compound angles involve the trigonometric ratio of the sum of two angles or the difference between two angles. Let's look. Let's do the following discovery exercise. Given number one is that A is 60 and B is 30. Number two, A is 110 and B is 50. And number three, A is 225 and B is 135. Now use a calculator to evaluate each of the following. So first do for us cos of A minus B. That means it is 60 minus 30. Then you do cos of A minus cos of B separately. And then you do cos A cos B plus sine A plus sine B. So first do that and see what, what are your outcomes. Then number question number two, what do you notice about the values of A minus B and the cos of A minus the cos of B? Of course, you will notice that they are different. And B, what do you notice about the values of the cos of A minus B and the cos of A, cos of B plus sine of A, sine of B? From the above discovery exercise, it is clear that the cos of A minus B is not equal to cos A minus cos B, and that cos of A minus B is the same as cos A times cos B plus sine A times sine B for the given values. Now we will prove that identity. So we're going to prove that cos of A minus B is equal to cos A times cos B, plus sine A times sine B is true for all values of A and B. Now the proof, of course, is not for examination purposes, but we're going to do it on the next page. Right, let's look at the sketch I have. You notice I have an angle beta, which is an acute angle in the first quadrant. Then I have angle alpha, which is obtuse in the second quadrant. And they are both what we call unit circles because the radius is 1. Then that means, people, that Q will be cos beta sine beta and P will be cos theta sine theta if it is a unit circle. So, if so, and of course, angle POQ will then be alpha minus beta. So from the cosine rule in trigonometry, we know that within that triangle, we know that PQ is 1 squared plus 1 squared minus 2 times 1 times 1, the cos of alpha minus beta. Therefore, PQ, if you collect your like terms, is 2 minus 2 cos alpha minus beta, call this equation A. Then from the distance formula, we want the distance of PQ. Then they'll be using PQ again. That will be XP minus Q, Q, uh, XQ2 squared plus YP minus YQ squared. That, then you do your substitution like you normally do. So cos alpha minus cos beta squared plus sine alpha minus sine beta squared. Get rid of the brackets. Collect your like terms. And of course, apply your identities. For instance, cos alpha plus sine alpha, cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha, for instance, is a 1. And so forth. So apply your rules. Then you get PQ squared is then 2 minus 2 cos alpha cos beta minus 2 sine alpha sine beta. Now we can equate, sorry, call this equation B. Now we can equate the two equations. A, the right hand side of A, equals to the right hand side of B. So if we do that, then of course, we can now simplify further. We can collect the like terms and then divide by minus two, for instance, and then you end up with cos of alpha minus beta is equal to the cos of alpha times the cos of beta plus sine alpha plus times the sine of beta. But remember, you don't have to know this for exam purposes, but please take some time to work through it and make sure you understood this proof. Using the compound angle formula, which we just proved now, namely that cos of alpha minus beta is equal to cos alpha cos beta plus sine alpha sine beta, and then we can suitably make a reduction that the cos of A plus B, or you can choose alpha plus beta, doesn't matter, 
is this, then the cos of A times the cos of B minus side A sine B. So take note, with cosine, if it is alpha minus beta, you'll have a plus in the middle. And if it is a, as cos of A plus B, you'll have a minus in the middle. And both will have cosine A, cosine B, sine A, sine B. Now with the two sine compound formulas, it is slightly different. Look at sine of A minus B. So A minus B, then you see there's also a minus in the middle. A plus B, there's also a plus in the middle. But now we can have sine A cos B and then cos A sine B. You see? So it's different from the cos rule. And of course, sine of A plus B is sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. So of course, people, you need to try and memorize this. If not, then of course it does appear on the formula sheet in any exams. Right, let's do some application now. You must expand each of the following, like cos of x minus y. If you look at the solution, you remember it is cos x cos y plus sine x sine y. Number two, sine of a minus 20. Then you remember it is sine of a times the cos of 20 minus cos of a sine of 20 number three sine of 2 alpha plus 45 it is so sine of 2 over 45 is then sine of 2 alpha cos of 45 plus cos of 2 alpha sine of 45 and of course the cos of 45 is square root 2 over 2 and the sine of 45 is also square root 2 over 2 right which can be taken out as a common factor and then you get square root 2 over 2 times the sine of 2 alpha plus uh, cos beta. You can leave it like that. Or you can say it is square root 2 times sine of 2 alpha plus cos 2 uh, alpha over 2. If you look at B, show that the cos of 90 plus alpha is equals to minus the sine of alpha by using the appropriate compound angle formula. So cos of 90 plus alpha, so you choose the compound cos formula with a plus. So therefore it's cos 90 cos theta minus sine 90 sine theta. And the cos of 90 is zero and the sine of 90 is one. So therefore zero times cos theta is zero. One times sine theta is sine theta. So therefore negative sine theta. Right, express the following as a single trig ratio. So now you must reverse it. We look at A1. Sine 2 theta times cos theta plus cos 2 theta times sine theta. You should recognize this as the compound uh, rule for sine of the addition of two angles. So therefore, it's the sine of 2 theta plus theta, which is sine of 3 theta. Look at number 2. Cos 70 times cos x plus sine 70 times sine x. Then you will recognize this as the cosine compound rule with a negative in the middle. So therefore, cos of 70 minus x. Look at number 3. Cos x sine 3x minus cos 3x times sine x. Then you will, then if you do a little bit of reshuffling of the terms, so you can rewrite it now as sine 3x cos x minus cos 3x sine x. Then you recognize this as the sine rule for compound angles. So it's therefore sine of 3x minus x, which is a sine of 2x. Right, if you look at A4, then it is sine 3 theta uh, times sine of 2 theta minus cos 3 theta times cos 3 theta. So it doesn't look familiar yet. However, if I take out a negative, then the signs will change. And now it looks familiar to us as the cos rule with a plus in the middle. But don't forget, there's still the negative outside, which you cannot ignore. So therefore, minus the cos of 3 theta plus 2 theta, which is minus the cos of 5 theta. If you look at B1, then the cos of 320 times the cos of 20 plus the sine of 140 times the sine of 200. Now, 320, of course, is 360 minus 40. There's an angle in the fourth quadrant which of course is the cos of 40, because cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. Then one, uh, one sine of 140 is same as 180 minus 40, which is in the second quadrant. And of course, sine in the second quadrant is positive, so sine 40. And then sine of 180 plus 20, that gives you 
of course in the third quadrant where sign is negative so therefore minus the sign of 20 so therefore it becomes cos 40 cos 20 minus sine 40 sine 20 which of course is the compound the rule for cosine with a plus so therefore 40 plus 20 is 60 and the cost of 60 is a half you get b2 cost of 10 times sine of 160 minus sine of 10 times sine 110 then the sine of 160 is the same as 180 minus 20 which is the sine of 20 because at the second quadrant sine is positive then sine of 180 minus 70 that gives you uh, also second quadrant and of course their sign is positive so it's plus the sign of 70 so the sign does not change there then of course sign of 70 can be replaced by 90 minus 20. now this is co-function if you remember so sine becomes cosine of 20. right and now we can just reshuffle the terms rewrite it as sine 20 times cos 10 minus cos 20 sine 10 and we do recognize the sine compound rule of um, with a minus so therefore sine of 20 minus 10 which is the sine of 10 then there's a summary of the four rules please take your time to make sure that you understand and you can see the differences uh, amongst all four it is a good thing to try and memorize them however they are given in the exams that is an exercise please work through the exercise make sure that you can do all of it the solutions are on the next page right here are the solutions like i always say in advice please you work through the exercise check the solutions and make sure that you can do each and every one of them Right, this is Ahmed Suleiman with Mathematics with M's. Don't forget to give me a huge like and to subscribe. Remember, subscription is free.